Alright, hey folks, this is Chris Lucas of theprotestantview.com. Um, I just want to make a quick video, and it's about this upcoming Tea Party event that's coming up February 23rd on Saturday. Um, I saw a WND article, World Net Daily article. Um, it's WND.com if anyone wants to go to the site. Um, anyway, they had this article that said there's going to be a Tea Party event around the USA on February 23rd um, to promote the Second Amendment and um, gun rights and things like that. Now, I just, so it made me think back to the Tea Party and my issues with it, my issues with Ron Paul and Rand Paul, because they, because there's many people that ask them to please speak out about the corruption going on within the Tea Party. Please speak out about it. Because there is corruption going on. And and my point is, I, I just left one comment on this article and I had like a few thumbs up. So obviously everyone else, there's other people around this country that have the same problem I do and notice the same things about the Tea Party. Which is, okay, they got these protests. You see thousands and thousands of people coming out to them. A lot of them happen to be Protestant Christians. You know, they're not Catholics. I'd say, like, in the crowd, it's, like, maybe 5% Catholic, if that. But, I mean, like, because I went and talked around a lot of the crowd. A lot of crowds, uh, I'd, say, I'd say the crowd's about maybe 70% Protestant at the least. I'd say um, you got about... Maybe ten percent of ten to twenty percent of the people who are like not religious at all. They're just very conservative, and then you probably got like another ten percent that's Catholic or something. And that's pretty much the numbers I, that I I loosely see when I go out there. Like, I'm not taking any great polls, but anyway. Um, but I think anyone would pretty much say you know the majority of people out there, which the majority would be anything over 50%. And I think it's very safe to say, you know, there's definitely a Protestant majority out there. Now, so we're all coming out to these tea parties, right? And I asked some people at, like, some of these other rallies, like gun, gun owners across America, because you see the same people coming out to the tea party and gun owners across America. And I said, you know what? I, I remember, like, the past election that they said... Here are the Tea Party supported candidates. And I don't remember there ever being a vote. Because I kept looking very hard all election year and the year before for Tea Party events because I wanted to go to them and talk about some of my deals I had of promoting better candidates, alright? And I never saw any Tea Party events. I never saw, like, any conferences or anything. And then, like, when it gets time to, um put people up for the nomination and go, okay, these are the people we want to represent the, the Republican Party. I just hear this on the news. See, what happened was, and you got nothing but Roman Catholics that are running the Tea Party mainly in Indiana. So what, these, what they did was, they just talk, didn't take any vote from people like me or the thousands of people out in the crowd. They just talk and said, this is the guy we're going to support. And they just went straight to the news media, and you got, like, Roman Catholic Murdoch and people like that, and they're like, this is who we support. No vote from us. No vote from me. I don't get no vote. They just, they just use us. See, they go, oh, look at all these patriots, and this is what the patriots want. No, 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 there was no vote. I don't remember a vote. There's a lot of other people that don't remember votes. We don't remember conferences. We, we looked for things. And, okay, you know what? And maybe I just happened to talk to a bunch of people. Maybe a bunch of people are like me. And maybe we're just... You do a really bad job of informing people when you're having these conferences to pick the candidates. But that's your fault. And so, I, you know, let's not blame me for making this video. That's your fault for not promoting it better. Because... If you promoted it better, maybe we would have came out and we would have voted and then we wouldn't be having this video, okay? See, so, but what I think is, you didn't even have any kind of conference at all and you hire ups 
just this to see because I believe the Tea Party is kind of a controlled opposition front that uh, that's that works for the Vatican, and that's why your Roman Catholic candidates get put in office, and and no and no Protestant candidates. It's like, you know, just like with Ralph Reed and his so-called uh, Christian coalition. Ralph Reed, I don't care what he says he is, he works for the Vatican. And you can tell by what he said at the RNC, because at the RNC he said, I, I think it's progress that for the first time, no Protestants on the Republican ticket. You know, it's like, well, something like that. I think he said, you know, for the first time, no uh, Protestants on the Republican ticket. And I think that's progress. He thinks that's progress. Okay? And so why would you think that's progress? Because the Republican Party has been historically Protestant. So why would Ralph Reed say that's progress when we built the party? See, we're the ones who were anti-slavery because it was the South... And it was the Vatican who supported the South, because you can read the Pope's letters to Jefferson Davis. Just go on the internet and find you can find this. And and no, folks, these aren't just make-believe things. Like you can actually see the documents. These are real documents, real historical things that happened. And you can see the Vatican supported the South. And see, a lot of your Protestants were abolitionists, and they wanted to get rid of slavery. They found it. They found it disgusting. They never wanted it to exist in this country in the first place. But the South kept going around and around, coming up with things like marriage licenses and all this other stuff so they can just keep slavery going and going and going. But, you know, we thought... I mean, you know, when they initially had that no importation of slaves, they thought that was going to get rid of it. Like, okay, after this generation, it's gone, and nope, South comes up with marriage licenses, and the next thing you know, they keep on with the slavery. So, um, anyway, so it's like, you know, the, the, the Republican Party has been the, the party of, you know, of the Protestants that wanted to have, you know, uh, equal rights for everybody. And see, and it's like the Democrats were always the ones who favored slavery in the South. But see, the, guess who the Democrats also kept making deals with? The Vatican, so they could get votes. Because see, um, Bishop Hughes, in 1844, I believe, he told politicians, hey, you'll get Catholics, and then he told politicians in New York, hey, we'll, the Catholic Church will back you, and you'll get the Catholic vote. If you'll just do some things we want you to do, like get rid of the Bible out of public schools and things like that. Well, okay, so you had a lot of Democrats that took them up on this. And next thing you know, in 1854, I think it was uh, 39 schools in New York removed the Bible out of the public school and also altered the history books to favor the Vatican. Now, see, and here's my thing about, you know, Ron Paul is that Ron Paul's friends with Tom Woods and promotes Tom Woods, promotes Neapolitano, even said, oh yeah, I'll have Neapolitano as my vice president. Well, Neapolitano and Tom Woods both believe Lincoln's a scumbag. And they also, and, and see, they, because they, because basically, you know what, this is what the deal is. See, Tom Woods rewrites history to favor the Vatican. He's this Catholic that rewrites history to favor the Vatican and the Catholic Church. He won't go into the whole thing about, well, yeah, you know, they, the Pope supported slavery. Yeah. No, he, he will not, he will not go into all that. And that's what they did, because, you know what, he's not going to go into the truth, because that's not his job. His job is a you know, is to rewrite history to favor the Vatican. And that's what he does. That's how he got money to even support his website. He wouldn't get backed, you know, if, if he was writing the truth. So, um, but, you know, why, why would he write the truth when he supports that, that Vatican anyway? So, th that's my issue with, and that's why I don't think you can trust Ron Paul. Because why is he going to, do you think he'd ever say anything about the corruption going on within the Tea Party? No. Think Rand Paul's going to say it? No. Because he might be just like his dad. I see, I hope not. But, you know, I, I, I kind of believe he probably is like his dad. You know, they're both, you know, promoting Reagan. What did Reagan do? Well, Reagan removed laws that were put in place 
back in like 18, I think it was 1864 or 1868, something like that. And what these laws were, they were put in place to prevent things like a Vatican embassy from being created. Well, why were they put in place? Because there was a, a connection between the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and the Vatican because John Surratt was found hiding. He's one of the conspirators, and he was found hiding in the Vatican, and he even worked as a Pope's bodyguard, and the Vatican knew, the whole world knew, they were looking for John Surratt, that the United States was looking for John Surratt, and that he was guilty of this, and the Vatican was hiding him. And just like all the co-conspirators, all ten of them, it's been proven they're of Catholic background. You know, John Wilkes Booth, that was a Roman Catholic, went and shot Lincoln. Now, so, you know what, folks? There, see, there's just this big tie-in. And here's Ron Paul supporting Neapolitano, who's a Roman Catholic. And Neapolitano said, hey, man, me and all my friends on Fox all believe the same thing. See, and Hannity, what is Hannity? A Roman Catholic and culture, a Roman Catholic. So, yeah, see, they probably all do believe the same thing. Because they are all Roman Catholics, and they all support the Vatican. And they'll, ne and they'll never, ever get into the corruption. Because, see, why do people, why does Ron Paul, why does Rand Paul never talk about Judge Rosemary Collier, who Bush appointed? Oh, and people are like, well, who's that? Well, Judge Rosemary Collier is the judge who threw out the case that the Jews brought up against the Bush family. See, I mean, how does that happen? How does this judge who Bush appointed winds up seeing his family's court case? But anyway, these Jews bring up this court case against the Bush family. They were victims, you know, in the Holocaust and things like that. And the judge threw it out. Um, and that's because but the Bush family was involved in it. You know, the Browns brothers, Harriman, and things like that. You know, it's like... They were, they were working with the Nazis and all this stuff, and the judge just even just threw the case out without even listening to the Jews. But hey, you, got, you, got, you, you had the Pope who signed four concordats with Hitler. You had, the, you had Catholic priests that worked in the Ustashi, which was in Yugoslavia, and the Ustashi was worse than the Nazis, in my opinion, from everything I read. They were far worse, and it was in the same time period, both during World War II, because um, they were allies with Hitler. The uh, Yugoslavia and Hitler were allies with each other. So, and you had nothing but Catholic priests running the Ustashi. And you think though the concentration camps in Germany were bad, they were even worse in, U in um, Yugoslavia. And a lot of people were dying just because they wouldn't accept the Roman Catholic faith. There was an Inquisition going on. But hey, who, who talks about this? Who wants to talk about it? And see, and it's like, you know, why doesn't Ron Paul, or Ron Paul, if they're so honest and so about bringing light to the subject, you could win a court, I mean, you could win, you could win votes this week, because, you know, once you start calling these people out, I think liberals would have got behind you, I think other conservatives would have got behind you, and they would have been like, wow, you're right. Um, the Republican Party doesn't even change, but see, you're not about that. You're not really about that. And... Um, but, I mean, because why would you not, why would, see, and this is why Sean Hannity, Ann Coulter, Laura Ingram, they're, none of them are going to talk about this, this is why they promote Rubio, Rubio who's a Roman Catholic, Rubio who's a joke, Rubio who isn't even a natural born citizen because neither one of his parents, um, were U.S. citizens at the time of his birth. Yeah, Rubio was born here, but that does not make you a natural born citizen, both your parents have to be citizens when you're born for you to be a natural born citizen so and so that disqualifies rubio rubio went one step beyond obama people have problems with obama's father being from kenya and things like that but it's like rubio doubled him and yet these people are pushing him why are they pushing him because he's roman catholic but not only that but who are most of your Immigrants, you know, a lot of your immigrants are, are, you know, when they come in from Mexico, all those illegals, because that's where the majority of your illegals, yeah, that's not the only illegal issue. That's not the, your only illegals that come into this country, but that's a majority of your illegals. And what are a lot of them, Roman Catholics? Now, I know a few of them myself, and, you know, it's like, you know, I, I and it's like I talk to them, and it's like, um, turn them into Protestants, 
You know, they're pretty easy. For me, they're easy to turn into Protestants. Um, and, uh, so, I mean, so, the, so it's like, but I'm saying that, I'm wondering if they're thinking, okay, we'll bring all these people that don't know nothing about the United States into here, we'll just slam this amnesty thing through, that way we can get their votes, and they can just keep promoting our whorish system of politics. Because it's like, because it's not even American, it's an abomination of what America used to be. What the Republican platform stands for and what the Democrat platform stands for. It's an abomination of what America used to be. Um, and, but they're thinking, hey, you know what, we'll get all these illegals in. And what I do is it'll make the Protestant vote and the people who actually know what America's supposed to be. It'll make it a water down their vote because now we don't have that a grade of percent, and that's exactly what Rubio did. See, that's what Rubio really cares about: watering down our vote, making our vote mean less. Because see, if they wanted our vote, if they see if they really wanted to win, it's like okay, you got you. you I mean, like I know. I, I mean, there's probably twenty million or so Protestants. That didn't bother even voting, you know, who want to vote, who would normally vote, but didn't even bother voting this year because there was no candidates to vote for. Because I sure I didn't pull the lever for any of them except for um, one local guy I knew, and uh, I think I wrote in Jesus, and there was like a senator I talked to once, and um, and just for the fact that you know I actually could talk to the guy, I actually sat down and talk, you know, could sit down and talk to him, I voted for him, you know, so, um, I voted for those three people, I wrote Jesus in as president, um, some guy in some very little bitty local office, and, um, uh, and that one senator, I can't think of his name, off, and Andy Horning, that's his name, I, I wrote him in, because I actually sat down and had a conversation with him before, so, um, so I so I voted for those people, but other than that, I wouldn't have voted for anyone. You know, if I didn't actually like like kind of know these people or you know like spoke to them at all, I wouldn't have voted for any of them. Okay. Um. So and I, and there's a lot of Protestant Americans like me, but see they don't want to go after our vote. They're they're saying like, oh, we gotta go after the illegal vote and all this other stuff. Why not? Instead of having people like Ralph Reed so proudly sit there and go, for the first time there's no Protestants on the ticket. And I think that's progress. Maybe that wasn't progress. Maybe if he would have had a pro some real Protestants, not like George Bush, he who's a fake, not like Reagan, who's passing law so a Vatican embassy can be established, and not like Reagan, who went and got involved in the Iran Contra affair, which didn't really kill communists. Those Sandistas that you went and killed, who you were calling communists, they're actually anti clerical, and I think that's why you went after them, because they didn't like the Catholic Church running things in their country. And I think that's why you killed them, but you just said communists. You just painted them communists, just like you paint people terrorists. Like, oh, there's terrorists in this country. Let's kill Gaddafi. Terrorist. But yet, Gaddafi was fighting Al Qaeda. So actually, when you killed Gaddafi, you aided the terrorists, which means there's people in our government who, when they were pro, when they helped anybody kill Gaddafi, you aided the enemy because. Gaddafi was fighting Al-Qaeda, which took down 9-11 by your account, okay? You're the ones who said, you know, Al-Qaeda did 9-11. So guess what? You're the ones who said they're our enemy. Now, I don't believe Al-Qaeda really took down the, the World Trade Center. I don't believe Osama bin Laden really did that. And if he did do that, he had lots of help from people within the government. But, um... Anyway, but you're on, you, you, the government, are on record saying Al-Qaeda is an enemy. And you, the government, went and gave aid to people that were anti-Qaddafi. And so you, therefore, gave aid to the enemy, which means you created treason. Okay. 
But, I mean, what, what politician's talking about this? You know, Ron Paul, are you, are you talking about it? Rand Paul, are you talking about it? Probably not. I mean, I haven't heard you guys mention it. But anyway. But hey, you know, why are you going to mention? You're not going to mention, you know, the little things you can actually fix, like the corruption in the Tea Party. Yeah, why don't you mention that we should get to vote in the Tea Party before the higher-ups in the Tea Party just go tell the news agencies, Hey, this is who we voted for. This is who all the Tea Party supports. See, I'm pretty angry about that. Because, um, you know, it's not so much me. It's just watching all these people that are always getting duped all the time. They don't quite get this. And I used to be one of them. And, I mean, I just, I, I, I mean, I just see a lot of people that mean to do well, put a lot of energy into it, and give money into it put time into it, and this time they put into this, they, they take away from their family, you know, it's like, you know, you guys, a lot of them work 50 hours a week, you know, like me, I, I was working 90 hours a week and trying to go to tea party events and things like that, it's like, you know, and I get kind of mad when I got so little time, and that little time, you guys are just absolutely just stealing from me. And this is, this is what I'm making this video about. You know, and I say, hey folks, you know, come out to that February 23rd Tea Party event if it's in your state. I don't think they're even going to have one in my state. Because I actually think they're absolutely terrified of me. They're terrified about me showing up because I'll wake them up. I'll wake up the whole crowd. Their little announcers that sit up on that stage, they won't really get to talk. Because that whole crowd will talk to me. I'll run that show. And, that, and I don't think they'll have a tea party there. To be honest. Because you know what? Someone said, hey Chris, you know what? Why don't you go out to it? And I'm like, nah, I don't want to go out to it because it's the Sabbath. And they said, well, why don't you, here's a solution. Have it, you know, you can have a church service there. And it's like, oh, you know what? I never preached before. Not to an open crowd. Um, and, hey, maybe I'll go do that, you know, maybe I'll just take some Bible quotes, you know, some scripture, and I'll go out there and I'll open up people's eyes and talk about the political things going on and relate it to scripture and have a little sermon. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Thinking about it. But, um... Anyway, folks, I just want to tell you, that, you know, this is what's going on in the Tea Party because I haven't heard anyone point out the fact that this is what the Tea Party's doing to us, you know. It's a controlled opposition front. The, he the people who are heading it don't give you any vote. And if I'm wrong, someone let me know. You know, let me know. I mean, there is a possibility I could have just, I could have missed something. But, I mean, I tried as diligently as I possibly could. You know, I mean, I'm thinking if I spend, you know, 20 hours looking for events and stuff um, that were, that we, we would have went to vote and or past events where we would have went to vote on who our candidate was going to be. I would find it after 20 hours searching. I'm really good at searching on the internet because you know what, folks? I've been at this stuff before there was even an internet. I used to run BBSs and stuff, and that's and that's where you had just one single phone line calling up a computer, and people would leave a message, and then they'd ha hang up, and then another computer would call. I ran like a message system like that, so you know, and it's like, and I watched this whole thing grow, so I understand how it works. I'm gonna understand how search engines work. I, 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 I mean, I'm pretty expert at this stuff, and I'm just surprised after 20 hours I couldn't find, you know, where we had a Tea Party vote, ever. You know, there was no Tea Party vote, and yet, man, I'm sitting here listening on the radio, and here's a guy, yep, yeah, this is our Tea Party supported candidates. So just throwing that one out to you folks, and that's all I got to say.